welcome to MBA 590 Digital Marketing. Today we're going to be talking about email marketing. So email marketing is a great tool for customer relationship management and it can deliver actually one of the highest returns on investment of any of the marketing approaches that we've talked about and that's primarily because it's extremely low cost per contact, right? It doesn't cost much to send out one particular email. Um, it's highly targeted, right? You know exactly who's getting it and you probably know something about them because they're in your email list. Um, it's mass customizable, right? So you can have your email pull data from your database and provide particular customized information for that particular user. And it's measuring, right? It's measurable, right? Like it's easy to see, like, did they get the email? Did they click on it, right? Did they read it to some extent, right? And look at all the different contents there. Furthermore, email marketing strengths is that it takes advantage of a customer's most prolific touch point on the inbox, they're, they're on, the, on the internet, their inbox, right? Many of the principles in this example can be, can be also applied to things like SMS communication, in other cases, push notifications, other cases where you need permission to interact with the user. Email marketing is really a tool for building uh, relationships with existing users, right? Um, and potential users who have expressed some interest in the firm already. Uh, it should maximize the value and retention of those customers, which should ultimately lead to a greater return on the investment. Email is being used not only to drive retention, uh, but it can also be used for building acquisition, right? With someone who started uh, Interact, it can, be, uh, it can be used to push people to digital channels from physical channels uh, and can complement things Things like social and mobile strategies. Now there's three main types of email that you'll see right from a firm. Promotional email which encourages the users to make a purchase, download some content, request further information. Newsletters, letters which are really used to encourage a long-term relationship, then talk about what the firm is doing, how the consumer might engage more with the firm, and then of course transactional emails which just provide information about an individual transaction uh, but can still give you opportunities to provide additional marketing content within them, such as the like people who bought this recently bought these other items and things along those lines. Now how would you measure success? What are the KPIs of email? Well, one is you can look at the open rate. And it's interesting to understand how we track open rates on a lot of email. So a lot of email nowadays is HTML. What we can do is most email, modern email programs will actually generate a unique um, image, invisible pixel, for every single uh, email that you're sending out. Then when someone goes and they click on the, uh, on the email, the, it's basically calling a web page and that web page will pull that particular pixel and now we know that that particular user opened that particular email. We can also look at click-through rate from the email to the main site. We can look to see if they forwarded it on to other people. We can study the return on investment of email, obviously. We can look at how often the email content was shared on a social uh, context. Uh, we can look at new signups, new conversion rates as generated by email, and we can even look at what's called the delivery or bounce rate. Um, so con emails sometimes are bounced back due to the fact that the user no longer has that email address, or sometimes just because their email box is full, and we can use that to kind of calibrate um, our email list. So it's interesting because it turns out that mobile devices are becoming more and more the primary way that people sort through their emails. Um, so about 40% uh, of people between the ages of 14 and 18 say that they use the mobile device as their primary way to sort through emails all the time, right? 47% say sometimes and 27% say never, right? Uh, and if you look at some of the other statistics, of course, it's biased a little bit by age, but in general, there's a high use of email being used on a regular basis, uh, or sorry, mobile devices being used on a regular basis to access your email. So mobile is great, right, because it exists at the point of decision, right? If I'm there trying to decide whether to make a purchase or, or get a service in a particular store, right, it's right there and I can, I can start to think about it and start to do some research, right? Uh, but it has a smaller screen, there are a bunch of different OSs which makes it very hard to control and there's many different I, uh, um, devices. To make up for this, you really need to have obvious calls to action, it needs to be easy to skim, and it should be designed for touch, not click. In other words, bigger graphics, more white space, things along those lines. There are rules and regulations that govern how you can generate uh, an email. So these are governed by something known as the CAN-SPAM Act. 
Um, and basically what it says is that if someone requests to be unsubscribed, you have to accede to their request or you face penalties. Moreover, it also says that when generating an email list, you have to either have explicit permission to add that person to the list or a past history, a past relationship uh, with that individual. And of course, a lot of times you can't get that email unless you do have um, some sort of past history. Um, you can buy email lists online in different places, but in many cases it would actually be improper for you to use that unless the consumer had given permission to the firm for that to be shared with you, right? Not necessarily share with you specifically, but it often says something like with our partners, right? Legal action can be taken if you actually spam people, so it's important to keep this in mind. Uh, and regardless of whether the name was actually given legally, you should call your list on, on a regular basis because if, um, if you don't call the list, um, and you're it, for people who, or who don't want to see the emails, right? Then you're essentially going to be generating these spam complaints that will actually affect your deliverability overall. If you get enough spam complaints, ISPs can simply decide not to deliver your email to their um, to their um, to their users, right? Um, and they can have guidelines, or, or and not not explicitly, but they can essentially create a blacklist that will prevent you from delivering that content. So what should you ask for when you ask people to sign up for email? Well, the minimum that you need, right, is something like name, last name, title, um, but you can also get things like gender, country, telephone number, date of birth, preferred frequency of communication. Uh, you should always record the date at which the permission was granted and the source of that permission so that you can provide any evidence in case something happens in, in the legal realm. You should always ask for essentially the minimum things that you need in order to contact the user. Uh, but how do you get people to sign up anyways? Well, you encourage people to sign up um, on your blog. You can you have email signatures. You can say on your Facebook page, at the checkout page, and at physical locations and presentations, you can tell people what the email address is to sign up for your email list. One big thing that works a lot is providing incentives, right? Contest discounts, even something as simple as providing a user with free Wi-Fi in your restaurant if they sign up for your email list can be a powerful tool in terms of getting people to sign up. You should ask constantly, right? Like every interaction gives you the ability to ask for an email list. You can provide actual presents and gifts in order to encourage that, right? White papers, gift vouchers, I've seen music tracks, uh, discount codes for future subscription. As much as possible, you should make sure you have a subscribe box at the checkout section of your retail site. And you can use interactions at trade shows or in store in order to provide additional email uh, addresses.